what's the perfect amount of crafty stuff? I'm pretty sure that's going to be different for every single one of us. I'm trying to keep my crafty inventory low because when I have too much stuff, I forget about things. Things I love, things I really want to use. Last week, I talked a little bit about finding some old favorites and deciding whether I wanted to keep them. This week, I thought we could chat about the six questions to ask yourself if you're trying to optimize your inventory level. While we're chatting, I'm going to use this tulip stamp from last week and get a different look with it by creating my own temporary stencils and some ink blending. Number one, do I still like it? The answer to this one is usually yes. I mean, we liked it enough to buy it in the first place, but not always. Sometimes I like the idea of it more than the reality of it. You have to be kind to yourself here. If the answer is honestly no, that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. There's a lot of marketing and FOMO that happens in our industry. So give yourself a break and don't let craft supplies make you feel bad about yourself. Give away or sell these products to someone else who will love it and use it. Number two, have I used it? If you have used it, think about whether you've gotten your full use out of it. These things have a season, especially some of the trendier items. As I said last week, there are certain basics I'll keep forever, but others can come and go. Since I changed to Airtable, I've been keeping track of the cards I make with my supplies. This helps me when I'm trying to show in a video some of the older cards I've made with the products, but it can also give me inspiration to use them in new ways. If you haven't used it or you haven't used it in a long time, try using it now. That may make the decision easier, but if not, move on to the rest of the questions. Number three, is it easy to use? If not, get rid of it. I talked a little bit about this last week with an intricate die. I just don't think it's right to feel frustrated about a hobby that's supposed to be fun. And it may not be in the design of the product. I've had dies that I've damaged and then they won't cut properly anymore. It's easy to get rid of those ones. Number three, do you have ideas for using it? One of the things I've added to my air table is a column for ideas. You know how you have an idea, you order the product, and then it takes forever to come? Especially if you live in Canada like I do. Well, I've been typing in my ideas, especially for new items, or even when I'm working on a card and I have another idea for the product, but I don't have time to make it right then. This is new for me, but I'm hoping it's going to be helpful as the products arrive, or when I'm looking through the product inventory to rekindle some of the spark I felt when the idea first hit me. This is one of the great things about an electronic inventory. You can keep track of whatever you want to keep track of. Maybe even who you sent which card to. Number four, do I have other similar things? If not, you might keep it until you find something you like better. For example, my tulip stamp from last week. Also ask, do you need all the similar things? As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I do have duplicates of an alphabet die set and a couple of my small standalone dies to make die cutting faster. I have a couple of areas that I could probably take a closer look at, and that's my plaid making tools, as well as my orange peel pattern tools. Thank you to the viewer who shared that this pattern is a quilting pattern called orange peel. It's one of my favorites, as you can see by how many ways I can make it. Number five, do you have space for it? Do you want to keep track of it? And do you want to take care of it? Right now, my bins are comfortably full. And don't forget, I also have my favorite and most used dyes on my walls, so I really don't want to collect more. I'm also out of pockets right now, so that's a great way to justify having a one-in, one-out policy so things don't get out of hand. Stamps, dyes, embossing folders and stencils don't really require a ton of maintenance, but things like markers and ink pads do. If that's not something you want to commit to, maybe you need fewer of them. Speaking of space, before I get to the final questions, I want to remind you that the Paper Crafters Get Organized Summit is starting tomorrow. It's going to be a great weekend with over 25 speakers sharing innovative organization solutions. I'll put the link below so you can grab your free ticket. Now for the next questions. Number six, what would you do if you needed it to make a card and you didn't have it anymore? What would your alternatives be? This is a good question to ask and it really forces us to be creative. You know I have my LIMES acronym that helps you analyze an inspiration so you can get the look with what you have. 
If you haven't heard of it before, it stands for list, include, modify, exclude, and spin. Listing is where you think about the colors, techniques, and elements of your inspiration. So you can then decide which aspects you want to include or modify or change in some way. Maybe you don't like some of the aspects of the inspiration, so you can leave them out. And maybe you have a signature finishing touch or card size or color combination that helps you to put your own spin on it. Over the years, I've just stashed a lot of items and I can honestly say that there have been very, very few that I've regretted. The only ones I haven't forgotten about are the old scripting mama elephant word dies. What was I thinking? But I managed to move on and keep having fun creating with what I do have. This is another area where we have to be kind to ourselves if we do make any mistakes. There are so many ways to get similar looks if we just put our creative thinking caps on. Have you achieved your perfect level of crafty inventory? What are your best tips? Is there anything holding you back? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.